Um, link start. Ah, there I am. Okay. Cool. Wait. I have no arms. I have no arms. I have no legs. My arms are disappearing into my body. Okay. I can do this. That is not an intimidating dude. Okay. Well, let's talk about this. Alright, now this is Orbis. This is a VR MMORPG, and it's pretty much the only one of its kind. There's a couple smaller MMOs for VR, but they're not really MMOs. They're more like four-player co-op dungeon crawlers. This is pretty much the closest thing we have to Sword Art Online. Now, this is developed by Adulternum Game Studios, and it's on the Steam Marketplace as well as the Oculus Marketplace. Now, I was kind of on the fence about this when I initially got my Rift um, because it is very early access and the price point is a little steep, but after a lot of back and forth in my brain needing an MMO in VR, I just, I finally did break down and get it. And I'm going to kind of let you guys see a little bit of it and kind of explain some of it and let you guys know my thoughts on it. Now first up, there's not really going to be any in-game audio in this. I might have some parts where I play some in-game audio, but for the most part I'm not going to, and that's because the Oculus has a built-in microphone, so while I'm playing and trying to record with screen capture, it's automatically pulling audio from my mic, which doesn't really sound that, that appealing, because you get kind of worked up, because I play a warrior, and I do a lot of sword swinging, so I kind of get worked up, and there's a lot of heavy breathing, so rather than you know, hurt you guys and make you guys listen to that. I'm just going to have some music in the background and talk over this and dub it this way. Now, there is two different ways to move around in this game. There's the teleportation system and then there's also the locomotion system. I prefer to use the locomotion because I like to walk around and actually feel like I'm walking around rather than just teleporting everywhere. I hate the teleporting system and it really only works for me in some games being like Robo Recall and games where it kind of makes sense to use the teleportation system. In this game I prefer to use the locomotion but it is available. I don't think when it was initially out it had the locomotion where you could actually just walk around with the joysticks and aiming your hands but um, you can now. Now NPCs like this, this is how you either accept quests or take quests. They'll have exclamation points or question marks above their head. Now, this guy is blank, so it means I've either accepted a quest or already finished one, or I'm not ready for the quest he's going to have available for me. But the quests work the same way they do in pretty much any other MMORPG. You go up to an NPC, you wave at them, and then they'll spiel off some kind of dialogue, and you'll either accept or turn in a quest. Now, this, this is your player journal. This is basically what you'll use to basically keep track of any of the quests that you're on. You'll see I've got a few quests in here that I'm working on. It'll kind of tell you how many more creatures you need to slay, what items you need to find, that sort of thing. Um, you also have crafting recipes. This is for your alchemy table in your home. Um, you'll see that there's different things you can find in the world to make certain potions. This is the recipe for a healing potion. So this also contains maps for any areas you've explored as well. So you got those two. And then you've also got your combos. Like for me, I'm a warrior. So these are all different things I can do with my sword that are kind of like sword skills and sword art online. Now it's got combos for all the different things. Cause like I said, you start out with as the, the ability to be a ranger or a musketeer. Also, you have a gun and whatnot. Um, this is kind of like a legend telling you what it means when you run into certain enemies. And if you look at the inside of your shield or the inside of your bow, those are your stamina bars and whatnot. This book pretty much has anything you need to know about what's going on in the game. So if you have any questions, generally you can find the answer in the book. Now to put the book away, you just kind of put it behind your head and it goes back into your backpack. Now you can walk around here and you'll see I'm going to go up here and talk to this NPC and get some of my gear repaired. There's another player. He's kind of stuck in the ground. Usually that means they set their headset down on the ground. It puts their body in the ground. So I can click there to repair my gear. And the apprentice is how you repair any of the stuff that's on you. And after you die, your, your weapons and armor do take damage. Now you can break down certain weapons to sell to them, and that's how you can get more money. Now you can see here, this is your, your player menu. It looks a lot like the Sword Art Online menu in a way. 
And that way you can kind of put stuff on, like right now I'm swapping out this cloak because I got that new cloak I need to put on. Now I've got a helmet, you can actually disable the helmet in the menu. Um, I choose not to show off the helmet because it makes me look like an inappropriate uh, adult toy. Um, so yeah, but that'll show you any people in your general area. There's how you make your party and your friends. Clearly I have no messages because I haven't really made any friends in this game yet. Um, this is another NPC. It looks like he might be getting ready to give me a quest, but it's probably not one that I'm a high enough level to do. Um, you can kind of talk to these people and they'll give you a little bit of uh, dialogue as to what's going on, but you know, I'm not really ready to take a quest, otherwise it would give me the option to accept a quest. Instead, this guy pretty much, I think, just calls me a coward and sends me on my way. Now, you'll see here in my inventory, I've got all the different weapons other than the rune mage stuff. I've got the bow, and I'll equip the bow here, and that'll swap me, and you'll notice all my gear disappears. Because whenever you change weapon, it changes what class you're playing as. So, I, since I haven't played as a ranger or a musketeer, I don't have any skill in there. I have no armor for that class. I have no um, no level for that class at all. So I've got no gear. It'll take off my war your warrior gear automatically. Now it still shows it on you, but it, it's not there. It's not there anymore. So the best way to, to do that is to level up each class. Now I decided to level up the warrior first because I pretty much i am hoping they throw dual wielding in here. It's not in here yet, but I'm hoping they do because you know, I like Kirito. I want to dual wield swords, and that's how I've always played every, every MMO. I've played a, a ranger, or not really a ranger, an uh, assassin of some class that allows me to dual wield weapons. Now, this game's got a lot of bugs. You'll notice I swapped the bow to my other hand so I could draw with my right hand, and it's not swapping. It keeps putting it back on my right hand, and I, I messed it here for a little while, and I finally get it working. But there is some bugs in this game. It's not... It's not polished by any means. It's very poorly optimized. It runs not very not very well at all. It messes up quite a bit. Now you'll notice if I swap back to my sword, it, it does injure me. It does uh, put my gear back on, and it does do quite a bit of damage to my, not only my health, but my shield also. And I've got to wait for that to recover before I can get into combat. Now I think they do that on purpose, because they don't want people maxing out all the levels on all the different classes and being able to just jump between being a ranger and a warrior and in a way I understand that in a way I also don't like it because if you're a solo player I mean it really hurts the game in a way if you want to go out and hit people a few times with some arrows and swap to your sword if you're gonna take massive amounts of damage it's really not worth it but so you'll you'll notice that when you swap you it not only does it take a while to load but you'll if you notice in a minute ago it said my latency shot way up I don't know why it does that but it's like anytime you swap your weapons it like shoots your latency way up and it hurts you so and you'll notice here like I said I've not played as the ranger and so I'm level one ranger and I'm in like a level nine area so I pretty much get wiped out here real quick by this creature because I can't really do any damage to him he hits me like two times and I die because I've got no defense and I'm only level one as far as they're concerned, regardless of how high of a level I am as a warrior. So this thing right here, this is your teleporting stone. You can equip this and then you can pick it up and it will automatically teleport you to your house. Now I'm going to take you to my player house, which is actually a good walk away from this. So I'm going to go ahead and just teleport there and then show you guys my house. And then that way you can kind of know what to expect. Now here we are. Here we are. This is the house. Um, all the houses look the same, especially your, your starting house. Um, everybody, it's everybody's starting house. It's in the same area. Now, when you go inside, you're going to go in by yourself, but you've got your, you can get deeds to other houses later on down the road, but this is the starting house, and you'll notice this is your alchemy table. Now, anything you put in the chest over there will appear on this table, and you can use it to use these recipes. Now, the alchemy system in this game is actually really cool. I do like it a lot because you can grab ingredients and throw them in there, and you've got to wait for the water to turn specific colors, and then before you can move on to the next step. Like you'll notice I put this leaf in here and I have to wait for the water to turn yellow before I can put the mushroom and another leaf in there. And then I've got to wait for it to turn blue before I can put the fish in there. So, and then once it, I put the fish in there, while it's still blue, I have to go ahead and scoop it out with that bottle. Otherwise, if I, if it goes too much, it'll ruin the potion. So, and I have not messed with a ruined potion. I know it, it puts it in your inventory and it doesn't tell you what it does. So, but you can ruin a potion and I'm actually really interested to see what it does. I might have to test that out here soon, but see now it's yellow, I'm putting in the fish and as soon as it turns blue, I will throw that in there and then scoop it out and I've got myself a healing potion. Now the same thing goes 
with your, your lure area over to the left. And you'll see anything I put in this chest here for my alchemy table will appear on the table if, if it's an alchemy item. See like the tongue and the eye, those are lure items, they're not alchemy items, so we'll only put them in there. See, nothing there will actually go in there, but this is my lure table. Same thing, you put stuff in the chest, it appears on the table, and you can craft lures for fishing. Um, this is just a player inventory chest if you don't want to be overburdened and you got stuff you want to throw in here. Now, your starting weapons, it actually won't let you break down to sell them, so I got them, like, the other than the musket and the bow, which I'm kind of hoping I can work with a little bit, I'm keeping them on me, but my other starting items I've just thrown in here until I can break some stuff down. So... Yeah, that's how that works, and I'm going to keep the healing potion on me just because I might end up using it. So, And this is the starting town. You'll notice there's all kinds of players here, especially newer players, because this is the starting town. Um, these vendors, the way they do this is actually really cool. Every month they auction off these these vendor spots. So other pl these are other players' uh, markets, basically. You can auction and rent these, these booths out and sell your stuff. I think that is so cool, it's super neat, um, and there's some of these in all the different towns, like especially the big cities and stuff, there's these different booths and they auction them out and you can sell your stuff. Now I'm not sure how many servers they actually have in this game because it doesn't give you the option, like with World of Warcraft you choose a realm or what's nearest to you. Now when I've been in here I've noticed that I'm hearing a lot of different accents, and I'm going to guess say because the VR community is so small, um, they've probably only got a few servers. Now I don't know for a fact if they've got separate servers depending on your region but I've noticed I've noticed a lot of different accents from a lot of different people in the same server that I play in so I'm gonna guess and say that they've only got a couple servers now this game's not for everybody it's not the prettiest um, but don't let the graphics deter you at the very least if, you, if I've seen a lot of people say they don't want to even bother playing it because the graphics now yeah the graphics aren't the best I'm really hoping they at least at one point in time give us arms and legs because the NPCs have arms and legs so I don't understand why characters don't um, because I don't like the whole floating arms and floating arms and no legs thing with the big head um, I'll deal with it because it, it is a fun game but it does take away from the ability to be in awe over a person's appearance especially like a high level player I think a lot of us can agree that in MMOs when you see a super high level player with rare gear and legendary gear uh, it gives us kind of a sense of, wow, that dude looks cool, I, I want to be like that person, I want to achieve great things in this game, and with this game, it, it, it's not really like that. I've seen some high-level players, and they still look just as derpy and goofy as low-level players, so the ability to be awesome is not really in this game as of right now. It's just, it's not, I mean, you can be an awesome player and be a highly skilled player, but it's just... Uh, it, it doesn't feel the same as when you're playing a game like World of Warcraft or Diablo 3 or Neverwinter. Any of those MMOs, it doesn't really give you that same feeling of accomplishment when you find rare gear because it just doesn't look that cool and your characters look kind of goofy. Um, I would like to see them, like I said, add arms and legs and try to make some more cool improvements t towards the... Uh, towards the look of the game overall, not necessarily the graphics, because I'm okay with the graphics here. It kind of reminds me a lot of Wind Waker, so I don't really mind the graphics so much. I just wish they would try to give a little bit more emphasis on the wow factor for the characters. Now, there is a lot of bugs. Like I said, this game's it's poorly optimized. It, it, it took me a lot of work to get it to even run on my system. My system's running uh, Robo Recall at 90 frames per second, so... Uh, the fact that this game running in Unity took so much work to get to run smoothly and be able to record was kind of, it was kind of a stretch for me. I'm not understanding why it's so poorly optimized, but this is a smaller game studio, so I'll cut them a little bit of slack and keep, keep playing and hoping they add more things. Now, they are adding a new talent system they've been teasing for everybody. Uh, they still have no, there's no word on dual wielding or anything like that, even though that's what I'm waiting for. I think most of us in this game that play as warrior class are waiting for that. Um, but they are adding some subclasses um, and ta a talent system for the different characters. So that's something really cool. And, and the quest system is kind of basic. The, so far, at least from what I've played and from what I've heard from other people, the quest system doesn't get too extreme. The grinding is a little extreme. I will say that. It took me, like, I think... 30 hours playtime before I to get to a level six as as one one class, and that's because the grinding for experience is so unbearable. 
Uh, even when, when you hit, like, level 3 and you take out level 1 monsters, you get, like, no experience. So the only way to get any experience is to take out creatures that are just one level lower than you, same level as you, or higher level. So that is one thing that does suck. You can't just grind low-level creatures to earn some XP. Like, even if you're level 3 in the starting area and you're killing red tails that are just barely under your level, you're not going to get any experience for it. So the grind is extreme. I will say that it does take a long time to achieve levels. Um, the fishing system is really cool. I didn't feature it really in here, but the fishing is really neat. Um, the hitboxes are one bug that definitely need fixed. Now, you'll notice here while I'm fighting these dragons, um, I actually had a better shot at defeating these, at defeating these dragons by putting my shield up completely because the hitboxes are so messed up with the warriors and they've said they're going to fix this. They said they are working on it and they're testing out new things, but you can block your own attacks and actually damage your shield and not do damage to the opponent if your shield is anywhere remote, remotely near the front of your body. And that's one thing that sucks. Like while I'm fighting this dragon, my shield is all the way down to my left and I'm still hitting it and I'm not actually damaging the dragon. I found I can kill the dragons a lot easier. I can kill any creature a lot easier if I just put the shield up and focus on my speed with my sword. So that is another reason I want them to add dual wielding and I want them to fix the hitboxes. But all in all, this game is a ton of fun. It's not for everybody. If you like MMOs and you've got a VR headset and you just need something to scratch that itch, I do recommend it. I think it's on sale right now on the Oculus Store. I'm not sure if it's on sale on Steam, but it is fun. It does scratch the itch for a VR MMO, and it is a giant workout. Uh, I will say I've worked up a massive amount of sweat fighting creatures in this game, especially when I've got to kill like 20 of them for a quest. So it is, it, it's pretty neat. It's fun to be able to get into this world and, and fight. It does need optimized. It's got a lot of bugs, but it is in early access. So if you guys want to play it, it's up to you. But I do recommend it if you are an MMO fan and you like Sword Art Online and you've got a VR headset. If you aren't really a big MMO player, this game's probably not going to do it for you. So I'll leave that all up to you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I threw it together real fast. Sorry if there's any background noise. Uh, I've got a refrigerator going out. And I'm sorry that I couldn't be more in-depth with this video because I spent the last two days working on a car, and I promised you guys a video by Tuesday night, so I had to get this up. But thank you guys so much. Um, if you like this video and you want to see more, please click that subscribe button. If you guys want to hear more about Orbis, um, let me know, and I will try to do some more playthroughs on that. Also, guys, we did start a Patreon account uh, two weeks ago. I'll leave the link in the description. Um, please help support this channel if you can. If not, we still love you guys. Thank you for supporting us this far, and we look forward to doing more content. And I will see you guys next time. It's to go even further